So I started looking for individuals that were very successful and what they had done. And a lot of that led me back to real estate. So, you know, I started digging more into real estate investing. Hey, welcome to another amazing episode. Um, please, before we start, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave us a review, let us know what you think about this episode. Today we have Jorge Abreu. Uh, he is a multifamily investor, but he has been what it seems on every sector of uh, real estate investing. Um, he is a multifamily investor. He owns his own construction company. Uh, he fo uh, focuses in uh, deals in Texas and Oklahoma. And um, his goals for 2021 is to reach 10,000 goals, uh, 10,000 doors. Uh, so Jorge, please let us know uh, a little bit about yourself, your background and uh, how you got started into this. Sure, man. First of all, thank you both for having me on the show. Um, and as far as uh, my background and, you know, how I got to where I'm at now, uh, I'll take you back to, you know, university. I was uh, studying to be electrical engineer. Um, I realized right before graduating that I didn't want to be an engineer. Um, you know, I didn't really want to, uh, work for a big corporate company and work in a cub cubicle all day. Um, so I started looking for individuals that were very successful and what they had done. And a lot of that led me back to real estate. So, you know, I started digging more into real estate investing. Um, meanwhile, you know, I graduated with my degree and I went and I got a job working as an engineer in the engineering department of UPS but my side hustle was real estate. So um, finally I did enough deals where I felt comfortable and I left my W2. That was around 13 years ago um, and started doing real estate full time. Then um, I started with single family. So I guess I should mention that, you know, I was doing a lot of fix and flips, a lot of wholesaling, uh, got into some smaller multifamily, but maybe about three years ago, I kind of looked back at what I had built. Um, I had also started my construction company to help scale the, the fix and flips. But, you know, everything I had done till then was very transactional. Um, you know, it was from one deal to the next. And I hadn't built that wealth um, that I really seek to do in the beginning. Um, and that's what kind of led me into multifamily. Um, you know, if I remember back, I had some clients with the construction company that were multifamily syndicators. And before that, I had never really thought about purchasing a big, you know, 200 plus unit property. I just didn't think it was doable. Um, and then they told me about syndications and how they purchased the properties. And man, that just got me going and, and digging into how someone can do this. And um once I had the knowledge and um, started putting it to work, you know, underwriting, looking for deals. Uh, at first, I tried doing both the single family and the multifamily, but I realized, you know, with the construction company, single family investments, multifamily investments, um, I needed to focus a little bit more if I want, really wanted to grow the multifamily side. So I um, put some key players in, in place on the construction company so I didn't have to be so involved on the day to day. Um, I tilted my focus on the construction company to just multifamily and commercial. And then at the same time, I stopped doing single family investments altogether and just went all in on multifamily. Um, you know, three years later, now at uh, 1,720 doors. And like you said, you know, original goal for next year was to reach 10,000. COVID may have slowed us down <laughs> a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, the, the virus had a different idea, but... Uh, for everyone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're still, you know, we're still looking for deals and we're still doing our thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's how I got to where I'm at now. That's awesome, man. That That's, uh, you know, awesome to hear your, your aha moment. Uh, so what, what attracted you so much to the syndication formula? Because I know when we figured out the syndication formula, we were like the same thing, like, oh, wow, this is how they do it? Like, amazing. Yeah. So what, what attracted you to it? I mean, man, just the, 
there's so many aspects, but, um, <laughs> you know, one, the, the commercial financing, the, the loans you can get, um, are so much more attractive than, than your single family or, you know, the, the non-recourse is a big portion of it. Um, and then, you know, prior to COVID coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, the bridge loans and everything that you can get the amount of leverage, um, and then also you've got the tax benefits. I mean, the tax benefits are massive, especially if you can claim to be a professional um, real estate investor. Um, I would say those two things, and then you can keep throwing, you know, the cash flow that you can uh, accumulate. Um, and then once you refire or sell a property, you know, the the capital you get from that. Yeah, I hear you, man. So, you know, diving into, obviously you scaled, you know, you didn't thousand units plus, you know, no one does it alone or without a team. Um, and that multifamily is a team sport. You know, how did you start? You know, I, I imagine you sold off your single families, right? You said you, you got done with doing that. Is that correct? And then you, how did you start that process of building? Hey, let me find an accountant. Let me find this team. Let me, let me build cap. Someone to find capital, all that stuff. How did you go from there? Yeah, started doing, um, started with a lot of networking, you know, going to, to a lot of, uh, networking events, um, putting myself in the right places to meet those individuals. And then, um, when I decided I was going to do this, you know, I decided I was going to do it more. I was going to build a company, not just do it to the scale of me alone can handle. Um, it was more of, I'm going to build a team around me. And we're really going to take this to the next level. Um, so I went in with that mindset and just started adding pieces as, as, as we went on. Um, you know, as far as the, the power team, as far as like the attorney, the attorney, the brokers, that, that was a lot of networking and just, you know, meeting the right people that uh, you click with. And then as far as the partners, um, like you said, you know, meeting, you know, for instance, when, when I first started do, doing this, um, raising equity was not my strong point. So I knew I needed to partner with somebody that, that had that experience. Um, so on our first deal, we took it down with a co GP that was really good at raising equity. Um, and kind of just used that concept on, on every deal. Awesome, man. Awesome. How hard was it? Um, or was it even hard to, you know, talk to that co-GP to sponsor you and to get you into that first big deal? Um, it wasn't too difficult because, I mean, we had a, you know, a track record of, of with the single families. Um, and we also had the construction company. So we brought that piece to the table, you know, where we would handle the due diligence, the CapEx. Um, we've always located the deals that we've done. So if we bring it to an to another co-GP, you know, we're the ones that did the work to find the deal. Um, so it, it wasn't too difficult, but I mean, I did need to put myself out there and, and, and get out there and meet the individuals. Okay, cool, man. How do you, how do you tie, because I mean, you, you did things differently, right? You had your, your single families and then you had the construction company, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you, had you single handle the uh, the um, construction side on the uh, on the fix and flips? Am I correct? And correct. that's and that's the reason why you had your construction company. That is correct. Yeah, when okay. when we began to try and scale the single family, um, we ran into some issues with general contractors and and felt like we really need to needed to have that part of it down packed um, to scale. So yeah. that's when we started the construction company. And that's basically what you're doing with the uh, with the multifamily deals that you have right now. Do you, do you have multifamily deals that are uh, that de either construction, repairs, and flipping from the ground up, or how do you how do you tie those two? Yeah, correct. I mean, we were using the same concept we did with the single families. You know, we're we're picking up the the true value add deals, the ones that that need quite a bit of work, um, and then we're leveraging our construction company to come in and do that, and know that we're going to get it done right. Um, we're going to get it done for the price that we knew we were going to get it done for. And, um, at the same time, 
we do offer our services for other investors as far as a construction company. That's awesome. Awesome, man. So when you're doing, uh, is your strategy just value add for the most part? For the most part right now, yes. Um, you know, we've been looking for the, the deals that we can pick up at a, at a discount price, go in there, fix whatever the issue may be, and then, um, you know, raise the value. And then your construction company, so essentially you hire your construction company to do your renovations. Is that, is that how you correct? Correct. The them? LLC okay. that's purchasing the property, you know, hires the construction company to do the work. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> and then yeah. as far as uh, property management, are you, are you uh, vertically integrated? Or are you third party? So third party, both. Um, okay. Well, we're not. So Elevate, you know, my company is not vertically integrated with the property management, but we have mm -hmm. co-GP'd with some that are. So they bring okay. that piece to the table. And then we have done third party as well on some other deals. Okay. Which do you prefer? Or is there benefits to one or the other? Um, I think there's benefits to, to both. You know, it depends on um, as far as if the co-GP has it internally, you know, there, there's more control to it at that point. Um, the only, uh, I guess the only con to that is, you know, we still need to asset manage it. So if they're not doing a good job, which has not been the case, but you know, if that ever was the case, it would be a, a difficult talk there. Uh, Cause you're talking to your partner and telling them, Hey, you know, you need to step it up here or, or, or whatnot. Um, and then with the third party, you just, you really have to manage them. You know, you really have to make sure you're doing your part as an asset manager, uh, tracking KPIs and staying on top of them to make sure but um, I think once you get a good little system down with, with a third party, uh, it could be a good thing too. Awesome. Okay. And then, so one of the things I've noticed is, um, you know, you utilize virtual assistants and probably executive assistants as well. How are you integrating them in key pieces of your business? Because I'm, I'm sure, I mean, I can just tell from the emails we had, you, you know, you use virtuals for social media and that interaction. What else do you use them for? Um, yeah, we use them virtual system for marketing a lot. Um, but we are looking into more of like executive admin kind of work now as well. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're great, man. If you find a, if you, you may have to go through a few to, to, to find some good ones, but once you find a good one and you get a good, uh, it goes back to systems, you know, if you have a good system of, of, um, delegating the tasks and, and how they get everything done, then uh, it's great. Hi, brother folks. So let me ask you a question, man. So I, I, so 14 years ago, right? That's when you started? Roughly, yeah. Okay, so you went, I mean, actually you went through the, uh, through the whole uh, real estate market crash, right? Like yes. 2006, and that's when you started your, your, your real estate business. How do you see this, since you went through the transition, right? What's the difference from then to now, and what do you see opportunities rising up due to the uh, coronavirus? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the big, big difference um, is that back then, it was an issue with the economy. You know, it, it that was more of a, a lasting, well, we don't know yet, but I, I, I think that was gonna be more of an lasting effect when you look back at what COVID did to the economy. Cause I mean, you know, before we were hit with this virus, the economy was at one of the best places it's, it's been, you know, yeah. it was strong. Everybody kept talking about, we're going to go into an, a, a recession since like 2016. They were saying that, you know, every year. Was, <laughs> yeah. Every year um, somebody prophesized it. <laughs> you know, I, I do think it, it was getting close. Um, you know, this might've been the year, um, so we, but even then it was going to be a normal recession. It wasn't going to be 2008 and what happened back then. Um, so I think as long as we stick to a good plan of reopening um, and we don't get another spike um, in cases or deaths or whatever, um, you know, I feel that the economy is going to get back there 
pretty soon, you know, maybe by the end of next year, it, it's going to be strong again. Um, so I think the recovery is going to be a lot quicker this time. And the opportunities are going to be there, but they're not going to be there for a long period of time either. Perfect. Why do you say that that last piece that they're not going to be there for a long time? Because the economy is going to keep getting stronger and stronger. Oh, gotcha. um, you know, so they're. It's going to dip and kind of go up real quick. Is that what you're saying? Normalize? I don't know about real quick, but yeah, it's, it's going to yeah. start heading back up for sure. And then. Um, you know, there's a lot of, this is just me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. You know, there's a lot of questions. Um, so far collections have been decent for um, April and May. Um, you know, some people are saying once the stimulus runs out, that's when we're going to see the bigger hit at the same time we're reopening though. So yeah, no one's really know. knows. You know, how yeah. quick can we re reopen without, causing more issues i guess yeah it's a balance in that that's for sure man that's for sure so you, um, your goal your goal was ten thousand dollars ten thousand doors by next year right and you mentioned at the beginning of the uh, of the show that you kind of like put a pause on that right um it, that's basically what the, the most people that we're talking to is just they sitting on the sideline waiting to see what happens is that what you're what you're doing and once yeah, I mean, we didn't, we didn't put a complete now, a complete pause. I mean, we have a 850 unit um, under contract right now. Um, we had an under contract before coronavirus, but the seller, great seller, been working with us. Um, so I think we're going to be able to work through it. Um, and we're we're already looking. We're already seeing some opportunities pop up. Uh, really, what needs to kind of catch up is um, the financing is the toughest part right now. So yeah. especially if. Can you if Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, especially if you're needing, you know, bri bridge debt right now is almost doesn't exist. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, there's still some, some lenders doing it, but um, so, I mean, to me, that's, that's the toughest part as far as getting a deal closed. No, I hear you. Yeah. Bridges was hitting us right now. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not an easy thing. But uh, so you're you're working with this deal, and do you do you think if you're, I mean, obviously you try and buy low right now, but you think if the depending on how the market's going, you might be buying a little bit high. I mean, I wouldn't buy anything high. Yeah, you're, but you're I'm saying, saying, I'm saying because obviously the rents and the market's fluctuating right now, right? So is there is there a concern? You think that maybe. With this past deal, you may have bought a little bit high as opposed to when the dip goes down or in normalize this kind of thing. Or is this a long term? Like, you know, even though you buy now in five years or seven years when you, you know, reposition the asset, you should be good, right? Yeah, you're saying because some, some people are saying not to buy right now and wait till prices go down further. Yeah. Um, you know, my my issue with that is you're going to wait. So you're going to leave your money on the sidelines. If it's a true opportunity, it's one, it's not going to be there in six or nine months. Um, and two, you're just leaving your money on the sideline for six to nine months when you could be putting it to use, um, you know, pricing wise. Yeah. I mean, everything we're looking at, we're looking at buying at a good price at a price where we feel is, um, low enough to where it makes sense. Um, as far as pro forma and what we're putting into the pro formas, I mean, man, that's all guesswork right now. So what we're really looking at is the basis that we're going in. Are we going in low enough to where we feel comfortable, um, that the pro forma isn't really too much of a concern. So in, rega so in regards to this deal, Right, because I'm pretty sure you you say you you're on the contract right now, right? Negotiations, and it started before the uh, the coronavirus hit us. Um, have you guys renegotiated due to the circumstances, or you just kept it yeah. as it was? Okay. No, yeah, several times. Okay, got it. Yeah, so that <laughs> oh, okay. was mine. that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff, man. So, uh, you know, something um, I always ask people um, because it's not talked about much in 
in the real estate world, but family, family work balance, right? Um, you, you're, you're family man. You, yes, sir. You married three, three okay. little girls. Yeah. Awesome, man. So I know it must take a huge toll as an entrepreneur, as a real estate investor, everything you've done so far, but what kind of advice can you give to people as far as work, work life balance? Obviously, you have to make your significant other and the family feel like they're still the priority and that they are the priority. How do you make it happen, man? That is a tough question, man. It's not easy. <laughs> um, it's not, it's not. Yeah. yeah it's not easy. Um, you know, I travel a lot as well. Um, or was traveling a lot. <laughs> um, so what, what I do is when, when I'm here, I'm, I'm present. You know, when I'm with the family, I'm, I'm all in. Um, and I make sure that I'm, I'm there for those really important, um, you know, memories that they're going to have in their life. You know, if it's their first basketball game, their uh, whatever it is, you know, um, recital, dance recital, a lot of those. Um, I'm there for them. And then. When I am here, I'm a hundred percent there. Awesome, awesome. man. Do you, do you time block hardcore? Is that something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, got to. Um, and then I also, you know, I don't usually work from home, so I have a, an office too. So I like to kind of separate it. So when I come home, gotcha. I'm home. That, that's good advice. I've been having an issue with that during COVID. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> working from home. <laughs> <laughs> that's rough, man. I don't know how people do that. Yeah, they, they've uh, over me. they've bombed me on a couple of <laughs> podcasts and some webinars, but uh, yeah, I think we'll be good right now because this one's this one's late. Oh, I, think, like I, think, it, man. I think that's what I worry the most. But then I think about it, it's like, oh, it's a kid, you know, well, yeah. people aren't gonna care about it. But yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Jorge, so so just to to wrap it up, and then where can people find more about you? Um, on my website, which is elevatecig.com. Um, they can also email me at Jorge J O R G E at elevatecig.com. Actually, I don't know if you could see it, but no. there. <laughs> um, yeah, after I did like the tenth podcast. Uh, <laughs> Probably put it closer. Uh, um, and then as far as the construction company is jntconstruct.com. We'll put it on the nose though. So. Yeah. Thank awesome, you. man. Yeah. I think we have a new about, but man, thank you so much for coming on and we, we really appreciate it, man. Cool. Yeah. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, brother.